Hi, I'm here today to help you with your workbook, Introduction to Multiplication and Division. So if you don't have your workbook right now, press pause and go and get it. All right, if you are ready to go, we are gonna to be today working on this page, Commutative Property. So go ahead and turn to that page right now. So the commutative property is one of those properties of multiplication that sounds complicated because it's got a big name, but it's actually really easy. And it's something you've probably already pointed out to your teacher. And that's the idea that the order of the factors in multiplication don't matter. They don't affect the product. So you notice that in the earlier videos, I always say the first number shows the number of groups the second number shows the number in each group. And it's really important that we have one multiplication equation to match each model. That's true, but with just small changes to the model, we can make the opposite equation true. So five times two equals 10, two times five equals 10. No matter which order the factors are, you will get the same answer. This can be really helpful if you're working with a multiplication problem that you're not sure about. Switch the numbers and see if it's easier for you. And we can draw models to prove that the commutative property is true as well, which is what we do on the top of our input page. So you'll notice that you have two arrays to look at. One shows two times three, two rows with three in each row, and the other one shows three times two, three rows with two dots in each row. These are nice and small, and so we can count how many dots there are total and prove to ourselves that you really do get the same answer, the same product. So if you need to count, go ahead and count, and you will see that both have six in them. Grab your pen or pencil and let's write six. Two times three equals six. Three times two equals six. Now let's look at our sentences down here. When you are multiplying, the order of the blank doesn't change the value of the product. Well, if you were listening before, you would remember it's factors. The order of the factors doesn't affect the value of the product. It doesn't change the number. So let's write factors in here. When you are multiplying, the order of the factors doesn't change the value of the product. This is called the blank. Well, hopefully you're paying attention. It's called the commutative property. And if you're not sure how to spell it, it's at the top of your page. Okay, this is called the commutative property. Both multiplication equations have the same, this is kind of a tough one, so you have to think, what do I know about the commutative property? And what do I know about multiplication vocabulary? Both multiplication equations have the same product. They have the same answer. And the answer in a multiplication equation is called the product. Okay, now it looks like I have some blank models down here. Oh, blank models? What numbers do I put in? Well, I know I'm practicing the commutative property, so I know it has to change. For example, this first number bond has four circles. That means four groups. The second number bond has two circles, which means two groups. So if one has four and one has two, I switch it and put the opposite number in the number bond. It might be a little confusing. I'll go through it and hopefully it will make sense. So I have four and two. In my number bond with four groups, I know I need to put two in each group. So two, 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 two. I can write my multiplication equation, four groups of two. If you're not sure the answer to that, that, that yet yeah, that's fine. You can skip count. You can add up. You can write in the margins here, whatever you need to do to find out the answer is Eight. So I can put eight in the top of my number bond and eight as the answer to my equation. And remember the way I knew that the, I had to put twos in was that there are two groups here. So here it's the groups, here it's the number in each group. Here four are the number of groups, 
here it's going to become four in each group. So let's get started with that. Let's put four in each of these number bonds. Now because of the commutative property, I already know my answer. It has to be eight because the order of the factors doesn't change the product. This time though, my multiplication equation is going to change. I only have two groups, so that's my first factor, but I have four in each group. I'll show you again what it should look like. Okay. Now I have down here tape diagrams. Hopefully you've gotten the idea and you're ready to race off. If you haven't, that's okay. I'll go through it again. So my first tape diagram has five groups, five boxes. My second tape diagram has three groups, three boxes. Five and three are going to be my two factors because we're practicing the commutative property and you've been told we're doing the commutative property. So I know that five and three are my two factors. My first tape diagram has five groups. So my other factor three must be the number in each group. So I'm going to put three in each box. Now do whatever you need to do to find the answer to that. It is 15, so I'm going to put 15 at the top of my tape diagram. I have five groups, so that's my first factor. I have the number three in each group, so that's my second factor. And my answer is 15. Over here on my second tape diagram, I'm using the commutative property so I can fill in the answer already. I know it's going to be 15. That's how confident I am in the commutative property. I write the answer first. Now this time I have three groups. My other factor is five, so I need to put five in each group. In my multiplication equation, three groups of five, and I've already written the answer, 15. Okay, so that's our page on the commutative property. It's time for you to tackle the output page. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.